that makes it real easy to do. <clears throat> that. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Goth Gamer Nation and Goth Hunters, and welcome to Darkened Streams, wherein I review every one of the 327 episodes of Supernatural, or however many YouTube allows, before shutting me down. What did we learn in the last episode? Death is inevitable, doubly so if you're a hunter, and frequently if you're a Winchester. If you fail to follow a Reaper to your afterlife, you might wind up a vengeful spirit, forced to walk the earth forever until you become the very thing you swore to hunt. But also, you might get rescued, so I don't know. Maybe stick it out for a while. And also, if you've made a deal with a demon to trade your life and you get five minutes to talk with your sons, make sure you send the lesser one out of the room. Season 2, Episode 2, entitled Everybody Loves a Clown, sees the return of X-Files writer John Shebon, who last wrote the episode Dead Man's Blood, which was a decent episode dragged down by a kind of boring stylistic depiction of vampires that I wouldn't solely blame on the writing. Shebon wrote for some of the better episodes of the first season, like Skin and The Benders, and is X-Files pedigree keeps my opinion of him high. This episode also sees the return of Phil Screecha as director, who last directed the episode Providence, a fun enough episode about Dean's obsession with seeing his brother. But in a strange move, right after the season premiere and death of John Winchester, we head right back into a pseudo Monster of the Week episode, the concept for which was something series creator Eric Kripke wanted to use from the start of the show's production, finding the idea of a clown appearing in places it's not supposed to be a haunting image that would make for a creepy story. This is pre the It revival and the rash of evil clown attack videos, so that was still something of an untapped vein. It's a little bit cliche these days, but I still think there is a general innate eeriness to seeing some kind of person in a place or context you wouldn't expect, and you're like, hey, why are you here? It's like whenever I catch my reflection in something shiny. Sam and Dean give John a hunter's funeral, a practice that the logistics of seem a little questionable, but will show up many times in the series. Sam asks Dean if John said anything before he died, and lying, Dean says no, and proceeds to give us the first of many perfectly executed single tears. In many episodes to come, we'll see that Dean is so, so stoic, that the most he can allow himself to feel for his father's death is by you're squirting out a single tear. That's it though, that's all I'm ever gonna give it. The Supernatural crew even self-reference this ability later on. Single man tear, a single man tear, that's all we fear. Get a good look. This is where we're headed. <laughs> we're talking about the same show! What in the Holy. We then cut to a week later, and Dean has made considerable progress repairing the Impala. The fact that it doesn't look like an accordion anymore is in itself uh, miraculous. It quickly becomes obvious that Dean came out the other end of his father's death on a path. A path to the first instance of what I'll call Dark Dean. He refuses to let Sam help him or check on him, and is increasingly just irritable and closed off. Sam recognizes this and fails to get him to open up about his feelings. The fact that they lost their father and the cult, and the only thread of the demon's trail left is buried in a stack of esoteric notes left by John, frustrates both of them, so Sam decides to distract Dean with a lead he finds on John's phone, a woman named Ellen that isn't mentioned in his journal, but he clearly kept in contact with. With the help of a shit car borrowed from Bobby, we introduce The Roadhouse, a frequent location with a recurring cast of characters you'll see a lot of this season. Bar owner and hunter questgiver Ellen, her daughter Joe, and a mullet-sporting MIT dropout hacker named Ash, who thinks he can make sense of their father's demon-tracking notes. He's played by Chad Lindbergh, who came up in some stream-of-consciousness bullshit from another episode, I think. But he has the honor of appearing in not only an episode of Buffy, but also the X-Files episode, Schizogeny. Not a fan of his performance in this series, I'll say right now. Uh, but I see the potential, I see his utility, and honestly, I probably would have clicked with Ash a little better if they didn't introduce him uh, with a line taken verbatim from Joe Dirt. All business up front, party in the back. Ellen and John clearly had some history that goes way back, and she quickly deduces that if his kids are here, 
then John's probably dead. Dean apathetically tries to hit on Joe, but realizes for once the vibe is off. For one goddamn instance, this man stops getting away with it. While chatting, Sam notices a quest and asks about it. It's the creepy clown killer quest, and he accepts it. So this is like my problem with this episode, because it's close to being one of my favorite episodes of season two. The problem is the part that I think is a lot of fun starts now. At this point, when they go on the hunt, which is a third of the way through the episode. Everything after they leave the roadhouse is great, but they sacrifice so much time to introduce the seasonal staples, the roadhouse and grumpy Dean. A string of murders over the years show a pattern wherein a couple is killed, leaving behind a child who claims that a clown killed their parents. While they drive, we cut back to another family at the carnival, and I think, I think this may have been intentional, but in the spooky funhouse, there's a demon with yellow eyes. I don't know if they were that meta yet, but it, it was a cute touch. Once again, we get another surprisingly unsettling sequence where the clown follows a kid home and kills his parents. It's fucked up. Like, I don't like it. I, that means I, I like it though. Wanting to blend in while they sweep the carnival for EMF, they head to the manager, Mr. Cooper, to see about applying for jobs. This scene includes one of my favorite interactions between Sam and Dean in like, the whole series. Um, like when I think about good Supernatural, this is one of the first images that springs into my head. And if fan operated wiki sites are to be believed, it was actually partially improv. Oh, back in the car ride over, it's established that Sam does not like clowns, has a phobia of them. Hey, come on, you still bust out crying whenever you see Ronald McDonald on television. So back in Mr. Cooper's office, this happens. Take a seat. We got all kinds of local trouble. So good, dude. So fucking good. Guys, I think this show is good. <laughs> I think this might be a good show. Plus, we get another X-Files guy. This dude was in three episodes playing three different doctors in high-profile eps, too. He's a doctor in the Erlenmeyer Flask, doctor in three, and doctor in War of the Copperphages. C congratulations, dude. Because of this, you are by default the best actor in this scene. Mr. Cooper doesn't buy their commitment to the carny lifestyle, saying that they should go to school, leading to a discussion about Sam's future. In season one, he was really just in it for vengeance. Once the demon was dead, he had every intention of ditching Dean and their hunter lifestyle to be like a big fucking lawyer guy. After John's death, Sam seems to have changed his tune and keeps bringing up things dad would have wanted, which continuously pushes Dean to almost say something, but like everything else, he just bottles it up. After working for a while, Sam theorizes they might be dealing with a vengeful spirit that's tied to what appears to be a real skeleton used in the funhouse. A blind knife thrower winds up hearing them talking about the bones and is onto them being frauds, but Dean manages to convince him they are researching ghosts for a book. From this, we learn that Mr. Cooper used to work for the Bunker Brothers Carnival, which was in town when the previous murders happened. Another kid sees what appears to be an invisible clown, but this time Sam and Dean see it happen and they tail this family back home. I love this scene because this shit doesn't happen enough in this series. The clown shows up and they manage to get the kid away from it and shoot it, but this family wasn't in on the plan. It just looks like two psychos broke into their house and started blasting, so they have to book it out of town and ditch Bobby car. In these early episodes, I like when they just fuck up. Like, don't think certain things through or have to deal with civilians or police interrupting their work. In the second half of the series, when they fuck up, it's because they made a profoundly dumb decision that I was already screaming at them not to do. Like, yeah, you did a dumb thing and now you're paying the price for it because you're an idiot. You're an asshole. Or like they just get punched and their gun flies out of their hand, which they should really invest in some kind of bungee. They fight some more as they walk back to the carnival. You gotta open up to me, Dean. I'm morally ambivalent now, Sam. Just cry, Dean. <laughs> Sam calls Ellen and gives her what they know, leading to their best guess as to what they're hunting, something called a Rakshasa, a shape-shifting, flesh-eating creature from Hindu mythology. Which, I, I mean, sure. I, I guess it has to be something, right? What kind of metal do you have to stab it with? Dagger made of pure brass. Well, that's really more of an alloy, but okay. When they get back to the carnival, Dean asks the blind knife thrower if he has anything that might fit the bill, but it's revealed that he has been replaced by the Rakshasa. Me? <laughs> Woo!
Why does he look like that? There are some legitimately fun and creepy moments in this episode, and I feel like it has a lot of fun with its premise and setting. The fact that they give the clown monster a carnival-themed death is a lot of fun. Unable to find a brass dagger, they impale it on a calliope whistle. That's great. Hey, I 100% support that. Kripke, however, was apparently not happy with how this episode turned out, as it gave some clear supernatural reason for there to be a clown, which he felt diminished the creepiness of it just being a killer clown. Which is understandable, it would be infinitely more creepy if there was just a clown killing people and they didn't know what motivated it or why it did what it did, why adults can't see it. Instead, they get a phone call and Ellen's like, hey, it's a grabby ghoulie, and Sam's like, oh, okay, grabby ghoulie, we need a grabby ghoulie stab And I get that. Like I said, I feel like there are two directions this one is being pulled. One that wants to have fun with its creepy premise like the X-Files episode Humbug, where it's essentially just a grim investigation in a place that's darkly comedic for a, a murder to happen. Good app, by the way, uh, except for when Scully eats the cricket. I, I don't like that part. Dana, please, I can't watch this. I think Everyone Loves a Clown almost captures this vibe. It also almost doesn't look like Canada, which is impressive. It's got a bright, dusty color palette. The sun is out. It's, it's a night and day difference between this and season one. The other way it wants to go is it wants to set up the seasonal arcs. We gotta waste time introducing these assholes, and we have to at least four times remind us that Dean is not dealing with his father's death, further driven home by the episode ending on him bashing the Impala until he tears a hole into it. God, now it's never gonna get repaired. <laughs> This episode also introduces a plot contrivance that shows up a lot, which again might have a trope name that I'm just ignoring and supplanting my own idea, which I like to call a progress bar plot line. This is the thing running in the background while the boys do Monster of the Week hunts, and essentially Sam and Dean task another character to either search for something or someone, or research how to do some kind of spell or translate some kind of text that usually connects to the main goal of the season. That way we can check back on them in between hunts and they can say, I'm working on it, but this book is real old and complicated. Then a few episodes before the finale, the cold open is them hunched over some dusty books, or in this case, a laptop with its shell removed for aesthetic purposes. I think it makes it download Linkin Park AMVs faster. Then they say, I got it. We can start the end of the season. So, so anyway, yeah, the clown parts are cool. <laughs> Your number really i know how close you and your dad were. really lady i'm fine you gotta be kidding me this guy's no genius the leonard skinner roadie 